It's now 5 p.m. and we will begin the Committee of Adjustment meeting. We will be dealing with each application in the order of the agenda. And uh, this is a statutory public meeting. So for those virtually, it is a statutory public meeting. The committee will make their decision following each application. Anyone interested in the decision must notify the secretary treasurer, Sherry Mott. Please list the file number and your full name and mailing address. The decisions are final if there are no appeals 20 days after the decision is made. Anyone wishing to speak regarding an application will be given an opportunity to do so. I will ask any member of the public that wishes to speak to please state your name for the record. And I'll also let you know when it's time uh, to, to speak. I would like to remind anyone online to remain muted unless you are speaking. And planning staff will be presenting the reports and are here to answer any questions of the committee or members of the public. And I'm just going to do a roll call so I can see who's here, but I want to know is Rudy on the line? Yes, I am. OK, thank you, Rudy. And we know Marcel's not attending tonight. Um, the first order of business is deter to determine if any of the committee members have any disclosures of interest when considering any of the applications we are dealing with tonight. Are there any? Yeah, I have one. Uh... For application BNPL 2022150. Okay, thank you, Alan. That's noted. Okay, um, all the committee members should have received and read the minutes of June 15th meeting. Are there any errors or omissions? Okay, I see no errors or omissions. I have a resolution before me to approve the minutes. Could I have somebody move that recommendation? I have Adam and a seconder. Alan. Hey, okay, all in favor. Rudy? Yes. Okay, thank you. And those present, all in favor. Okay, the minutes are approved. Okay, the first application that we're dealing with tonight is file number BNPL 2021373. The applicant is Don and Judy Wilson, and it's for 11 Jaeger Ave in Simcoe. And I'll ask staff to give that report. Hopefully this isn't a foreboding for the meeting but um so this is an application that was previously deferred at the january 19th 2022 uh, meeting actually chair if it's okay uh, to present both the consent applications at the same time essentially same policies same so um bmpl 2021 373 and 374 are consent applications the subject lands are located um, at a property known as 11 jaeger in zidgo the designation on the property is urban residential and the zoning has just been amended to um, permit semi two semi detached dwellings and a single on the retained lands. Um, staff are confident that the application complies with the policies of the official plan and the zoning bylaw. Uh, recommend approval subject to the attached condition. I'm here for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? No questions for staff. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay. Staff are recommending approval, and I'm dealing first with the BNPL two zero two one three seven three. Did I have a member of the committee move that? And I have Alan and a seconder. Got Lisa. All in favor of approval, Rudy? Yes. Okay, and all in favor present. That application is approved. The next um, one is file number BNPL 2021374, and staff are also Hollywood head. approval. Is now joining. Could I have a member of the committee move that recommendation? Okay, I have Alan and a seconder, Lisa. All in favor, Rudy? 
Yes. Okay. Okay, the next application is file number ANPL 2022088 for 1880 Wyndham Road 19 La Salette and the applicants are Carly and Matthew Woodhead and it's for a minor variance and I'll ask staff to get that report. Thank you. You're the chair. Um, an application has been received to construct a new accessory residential dwelling unit. Uh, in relief uh, 15 square meters from the maximum usable floor area of 100 square meters. Um, 1.99 meters relief from the minimum interior side yard setback of 3.3 meters and uh, project to project 3.19 meters into the front yard. This application was deferred previously from last month uh, just due to an error on the public notice summary. So the relief request is acknowledged that 3.1 meter uh, projection to the front yard. Staff have reviewed the subject application and discussed you know, the reason for the placement with the applicant and are satisfied uh, and have the opinion that the proposal meets the four tests of a minor variance and recommended for approval. Thank you. I'm here for questions. Okay, does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Okay, no questions. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay, uh, we have a recommendation from staff for approval. Could I have a committee member move that recommendation? Okay, I got Adam. And a seconder, Lisa, all in favor of approval? Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application is approved. The next application is file number ANPL 2022106 for 267 Union Street in Simcoe, and the applicant is Daniel Wigmore. And that's for a minor variance, and I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. Through the chair, um, an application has been received to construct an accessory building requiring relief uh, from the exterior side yard and maximum permitted usable floor area. This is another application which was previously deferred from last month due to an error on the public notice summary. So the relief requested did not incorporate an existing detached shed in the calculation for usable floor area, and so it's, it's grown just a small amount. Um, Staff reviewed the proposed development in conjunction with the site size and neighborhood and placement in relation to the neighboring lots, having the opinion that it meets the four tests of remaining variance and recommended for approval. Thank you. I'm here for questions. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? No questions. Any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Okay, please come to the podium. Okay, and you're going to have to turn your microphone on and please state your name for the record. Oh, I think it's on. Oh, look, I'm Jen Montgomery. Montgomery. You're welcome. Um, so I don't know if this is what you guys offer, but no one said how high it was going to be. I'm going to ask planning staff to respond to that and you'll have to turn oh, your microphone sorry. off for them to respond. Thank you through the chair. Um, I don't offhand remember off the top of my head how high it will be, but we do have a maximum required height in the zoning bylaw and it does meet that maximum required height, but I can also look into it if you can give me some time. Um, I if I may, I'm Dana Wigmore. I am the uh, homeowner. Um, it does meet the maximum, which I believe is four meters or 16.5 feet. So it'll be uh, slightly above the spirea hedges that are there. So does that mean it's going to have a pitch? Because I also have a garage on the other side of my property that's quite large. So I'm a little bit hesitant. So I would kind of like the exact height of it. It it is uh, six is just under the sixteen, just under the sixteen feet. Do you know uh, to the homeowner? Do you know what that is in meters by any chance? 
I believe it's four. I'm currently trying to pull up the drawings. 4.8 meters. Is there any way to have it a little bit further back? I don't know if it's, does it meet the 15 feet from my property line? Uh, are, are you, are you, you the neighbor, neighbor that, that moved in, in behind? behind? We're going to ask planning staff to respond. Sorry. Because the only reason I'm asking is there, the initial um, notice that went out to the public. So that there was a variance uh, requested for less than five meters from the rear yard, but that was incorrect because the, the variance required for the rear yard is only two meters and it is at 5.86 meters from the rear yard. Through the chair, just to help with this a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see the screen, but um, based on what the um, homeowner just said, um, the accessory structure meets all the provisions except for how close it is to the road. So I'm not sure which property you live at, if you live on Union Street or if you live on King Lane, but they are meeting the required um, distance to that property line. It's just the um, the minor variance that's being requested is for it to be closer to the street and I believe for um, additional square footage so it can be bigger than what's permitted, but that there's no minor variance requested for the height or for it to be closer to that rear property line, if that helps. So I'm just not okay with it being very high and I don't know the technical terms from it. So okay. That's just what it is. So the, the planning staff just indicated that they're within the allowable height. So that's a non-issue as far as this meeting, okay? And the same with the back property line, they're within the allowable distance. So the committee is only here to approve that they can be closer to the road. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other members of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Okay, we have a recommendation from staff that uh, the application be approved. Can I have a member of the committee move that? Yeah, okay, I've got Adam and a seconder, Alan. Okay, all in favor of approval and Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application is approved. Okay, the next application is file number ANPL 2022114, and it's for a minor variance. The applicants are John Dertinger and Catherine McCall, and it's for 51 Woodhouse in Port Dover. And I'm going to ask staff to give the report. Uh, thank you. So through the chair, this, um, this application was originally heard last month, so it's an application for a minor variance to construct a new single detached dwelling with an attached garage requiring relief of 1.8 meters from the minimum rear yard setback of three to permit a decreased rear yard setback of two point, excuse me, 1.2 meters and um, relief of 6.3 from the required interior side yard rate um, of 7.5 meters to permit a setback of 1.2 meters. Um, the minor variance for the interior side yard is to accommodate a garage approximately the size illustrated on the revised drawings provided by the applicant. So the drawings that were um, shown last month that indicated the garage, the house and the, um, the deck. So planning staff have um, met with the applicants. We reviewed the revised sketch that shows a you know, smaller footprint of the building. Um, we are recommending approval of the minor variance as shown on the sketch that was provided that illustrates the three car garage. Um, the staff recommendation as written uh, references the sketch provided. Uh, one, after thinking about it, um, one additional recommendation that uh, I might make uh, for the, com the committee to consider is maybe adding um, an actual distance along that north property line. Um, to accommodate the garage just to kind of give some parameters so that, you know, if somebody else comes in and there's a minor variance or they want to do something, it doesn't sort of apply the whole distance and it really does kind of qualify um, the build to what's been shown on the drawings. 
Um, and I think after doing some math, that number is probably around 13.5, which accommodates the uh, meters, yes, um, which accommodates the uh, the required setback plus the size of the proposed garage. And it gives just a, you know, a little bit of flexibility for design elements uh, for the house. Um, again, we have received correspondence from the public. Uh, we did receive uh, clarification from the member of the public that spoke at the meeting that he has in fact met with the, the owners. They have uh, gone through the, you know, the desired plan. They are happy with the revised sketch. Um, so there are neighbors um, that are happy with the revisions. Um, we have received um, two other kind of comments, um, one from the condo board uh, to the west um, their comments that they provided at the last meeting, and I do believe um, the secretary treasurer has circulated the, the new comments um, to the committee before this meeting. Um, they're pretty similar to the comments that came last month, so we addressed them then. Um, and then another member of the public had just asked for clarification of like how long the house would be um, and requested a copy of the decision at the end of the meeting. So from a staff perspective, we do believe that after the last meeting, the applicants um, sort of have reached out to the public, their neighbors, they've, um, they've worked out, I think, based on what I've heard, um, any concerns, um, and therefore staff is satisfied that they, uh, the application is now considered minor. We can proceed, so thank you, and I'm here for any questions. So just so I'm <clears throat> clear, the 13.5 meters that you're suggesting is coming off the north lot. So, so through the chair, uh, the 13. So through the chair, yeah, the um, the proposal from planning staff would be if you see where this drawing, it shows private lane um, where that red property line is um, and it would go from that property line 13 and a half meters sort of in into the property and it would account for where that three car garage is now on this um, sketch. So it would it would probably stop about like here. If my calc if my calculations are correct, we'll be around here. You can see that. So that would be the side wall of the garage. Through the chair, that's correct. Hey, any other questions for planning staff? I just want to clarify. So for the description, if, if we were to add that condition, it's 13.5 meters from the northwest property line. I got that correct. Uh, chair, I think it would just be the west property line. Okay. West. Okay. Enough. Are there any members of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Uh, it's Dave McPherson here. I'm the agent for the applicant. Uh, okay. I just uh, want to make sure that that uh, provision, uh, if if you end up with the 13 and a half meters, if that won't impact the placement of a utility accessory shed in front of, of that 13.5 meter mark. Um, if if that ends here somewhere, uh, the Dirtingers would like to put a shed in, if you can see my cursor, in this area here as a utility shed for their lawnmowers and, and garden tools and such. The, the accessory uh, provisions would allow for a 1.2 meter side yard. And I just want to make sure that if they make an application for that, that uh, the building staff won't say, oh, but you can't do that because there is a seven meter setback required. 
uh, I want to make sure that they're able to follow the accessory building provisions in the zoning bylaw. Uh, through the chair, that's that's correct. If they build an accessory structure that requires a building permit, um, section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw would um, be applied. And uh, Mr. McPherson is correct. There is a 1.2 uh, meter setback already built into that section of the bylaw, so they would be covered too build an accessory structure outside of that 13 and a half meter fire variance buffer. OK, that's the only thing I want it clarified so that they're not precluded from building that accessory building in the future. OK, I think you've got your answer. And so. To the committee, um, we have a recommendation of approval. And with the condition being added that the garage on the north property line be no more from 13.5 meters from the west property line. And all in favor of adding that condition and I need one to make a like we okay. need to have some clarification as to the north and the west and so okay. that we got them like that. Because the way I read it, the Woodhouse Avenue is typically a north south street. Um, so I'm thinking that that property line is the north property. That's just the way I see it. Uh, can I jump in there? Um, this point here, if you can see my cursor, that point there we take as the north Dave, west. We can't, Dave, we can't see your cursor. Oh, sorry. I see my. <laughs> OK, uh, I'm not sure how to describe so if, it. So if I can, it if has nothing to do with Woodhouse. It would be the property line totally opposite Woodhouse. OK, where your cursor is now. That would be the north west property line. But we wouldn't we wouldn't refer to that as the northwest property line. That would be the west property line. This would be the north property line. This would be the east property line. So if OK, so that would be the northwest. northwest. Okay. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be northwest. It would just be north. But if we're concerned about describing it properly, we could always just say from the rear property line. So this property line is the rear property line, as defined by the zoning bylaw. There's only one, so we can say um, 13 and a half meters to the east from the rear property line. If that makes sense. If that clarifies it for you, because that would be pretty pretty clear. If you want to do it that way. OK, I've added both, so I I've, I'm describing the garage being located on the north property line. And that and that the it'd be no more than 13.5 meters from the west property line and in brackets I put rear property line. I think that clarifies it. OK, all right, so with the condition being added, um, and recommendation for approval. Could I have a member of the committee move that? So I have Alan and a seconder, Adam. All in favor and Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application is approved. Thank you. Okay, the next application is for a minor variance, file number ANPL 2022-125. Villages of Waterford is the applicant, and I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. So through the chair. This application was also deferred from the meeting last month. Um, so since the meeting last month, um, we have received comments from additional neighbors. So I don't know if you want me to go through it. So this is a minor variance application uh, to recognize deficiencies requiring relief of the zoning bylaw to permit a minimum of 40% of the front yard be maintained as landscape open space um, for the properties identified in the drawing, um, where 50 is 50% 50 is the required minimum. So as noted at the meeting last month, um, the request has been brought forward um, due to some concerns within the subdivision um, regarding parking on the street and access for service vehicles. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that the streets are county owned streets. This isn't a condominium. They're county owned streets. There is a minimum uh, right away of 18 meters where 20 meters is normally the requirement. Um, 
because of the locations of sort of the semis and um, their driveways, it does limit where parking can occur on the street. Um, so we have experienced um, difficulties for you know, service vehicles to get through there. So the applicant and working with county staff have developed a parking plan to help reduce um, the issues that you know the fire department was have, having getting through the subdivision. So we think that the compromise that has been proposed by the developer um, you know, is adequate to address the concerns from a safety perspective and also from the neighborhood. Um, so in addition to the comments we heard last month, we have received comments from additional members of the neighborhood um, who have indicated that they are happy with the compromise. Um, they do see that there is a need for increased widths to the driveways, um, and they do see that this will help out with service vehicles. So there is both perspectives heard. Um, so I do think that the developer has gone out, um, you know, and educated the people who, who live on the streets. So from a planning perspective, um, we think that the application is minor. We are recommending approval of the application. I am here for questions, and it is my understanding that the um, the applicant is here and wants to speak, and there is a presentation as well that I, I will share. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Okay. And any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Yes, I'm Eldenson. I'm representing the applicant. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Thank you, uh, committee members and the public. Um, this application, uh, I've reviewed it. I've come after um, the initial application. Um, uh, it, uh, it's, it seems appropriate to uh, reduce the uh, landscape open space to 40% on which is only 17% um, of the lots within the subdivision. So in terms of from a green green space perspective, um, the, the majority, um, the vast majority of the dwellings will continue to have 50% landscaped open space. And as the committee is aware, the 40% um, reduction to 40% will allow a driveway to be uh, slightly expanded to essentially provide one more parking space on those lots that have single car garages. Uh, that will um, help alleviate some of the parking challenges in this area uh, by taking or at least providing an opportunity to take one of those vehicles off the road. Um, I think it's important to note that um, if the committee uh, approves this minor variance, um, it's not forced upon a homeowner to expand their driveway. Uh, that's, that's up to them, but it, it does provide an opportunity to allow them to expand that driveway. Uh, I've reviewed this uh, application from a professional planning perspective, and I believe it also meets the uh, intent of the, the four tests of the, uh, the minor uh, of the planning act. And uh, I've read the staff report as well, and I, I agree with it as well. And I'm the committee to, to support this application. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the committee? Okay. We have a recommendation from staff that the application be approved. Oh, par pardon me. Sorry. The, the, um, uh, I believe the owner wishes to say something. Oh, OK, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Can I have a member of the committee move the recommendation for approval? OK, I've got Lisa. A seconder, Adam. Okay, all in favor of approval. And Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application's approved. Next application is for boundary adjustment. It's file number BNPL 2022150. And the applicant is Fraser Pringle, and I'm going to ask staff to give that report. Uh, thank you. So through the chair, an application has been received to sever a parcel having no frontage, an irregular width of 19.812 meters, an irregular depth of 67.14 um, meters, and having an area of 1,224 square meters, retaining a parcel having an area of 
um, approximately three hectares as a boundary adjustment. The suburb lands um, are proposed to be added to a rural residential parcel immediately to the east, um, creating a final lot size of about um, an acre, uh, 4,340 square meters in size. So the subject lands are designated agricultural by the OP. Um, they are zoned rural industrial. Um, there is an existing I would like to say landscaping business, but uh, on the uh, retained lands. Um, after review of the official plan policies and the PPS uh, planning staff are not satisfied that the proposed boundary adjustment um, meets the tests of the PPS and the OP. Um, so both of those documents, as we're aware, um, permit minor boundary adjustments for legal or technical reasons. Um, no legal or technical reason had been presented to staff at the time of reviewing of the application to satisfy the tests. Um, aside from that, the proposed boundary adjustment will actually create a situation where the lot will be uh, will have dual zoning. Um, it will also sort of require additional buffering to the landscape business if it ever wants to increase in size. Um, so for these reasons, planning staff do not feel that the boundary adjustment is supportable. Uh, we are recommending that the application be refused. Um, aside from that, I am available for any questions. Thank you. OK, does the committee have any questions for planning staff? OK, I just have a question myself. Like you talk about buffering and it seems to me like the addition of that to the, the um, residential property would actually add buffering. Uh, through the chair, I, I believe the opposite is true. I believe the situation that we currently have now where that grass is actually part of the landscape business is actually acting as a buffer. As soon as that land is added to the residential parcel, the rear lot line for that residential parcel will begin of where that line is. So the buffer is actually reduced. So your the way that it is now is actually acting more as a buffer, um, to be honest, um, because like I said, as soon as you sort of add it, you're getting that residential use closer to where you can see in the, the one photo where there's like an active sand, sand hill. So it is actively being used as part of the business. So to me, the buffer is appropriately being, a oh, sorry, you can't see the picture. We can't get the presentation on this. Oh, we're not sharing my. Sorry, guys. Sorry, one second. Well, I have there's a photo with the uh, the report that shows that, so I can see the the pile of sand. Sorry, I stopped sharing to potentially share another presentation. So you can see um, from this picture, I'm not sure if this is the same one that's in the report, but I guess this area back here is um, the area where my cursor is, is right. um, the area that's being proposed to be boundary adjusted. So if let's say this fence um, or the structure here moves closer, it's actually getting closer to the industrial use. And so the buffer is actually being being reduced. So and because in my from what I see and what we saw on site inspection that you know, this portion of the property is actually being used for the business that's there now, um, you know, getting closer to the residential lot, um, to me, would actually create a bigger uh, land use conflict. Okay, thank you. And did the property owner indicate what the purpose was for the boundary adjustment? Uh, through the chair, I believe Maria Kinkle's on the line, who is the applicant's agent and can speak to that. But um, through my correspondence, it was just indicated that the um, residential owner has been mowing the lawn and, and would just like to incorporate the that part into their their lot. OK, thank you. OK, does the committee have any other questions for planning staff? OK, I'll ask uh, Maria, do you have any comments to add? 
Yes, I do. I have a bunch of comments to add because I don't believe that the planner is correct because I think the fenced in area is actually where the area is. Uh, so because the fence, it, it's already within that fenced area. So, um, uh, so the fence line actually goes along this. It has been maintained um, as part of the client's property. Um, and so there's no change actually in the uses that's going to happen here. The only thing that's changing is the legal description. So, so there's no further encroachment on the land that's already actively done. So this is just to make sure that the legal description, which is a technical reason under the plan and the uh, provincial planning statement uh, where you can actually do an adjustment. Uh, so that's where I differ with the planner. It would have been helpful if Jennifer had actually called me like she had indicated she was going to, and that did not occur, which unfortunate. Um, uh, oh, when she um, spoke about this, it, this could have been resolved very quickly in a phone call, which unfortunately didn't happen. And the dual zoning thing, obviously we're not going to bring an application to rezone before we got approval for the severance. This is dealt with through the conditions and the proposed conditions, if this does get approved and which were attached to the report deals with this. So that is not an issue, that's a non-issue. And the other thing is, this is the OP is uh, for agricultural use. Um, the rural industrial use is not an agricultural use. By actually putting this um, back and uh, putting this land with the abutting property, we're more in line with the agricultural use than what it currently is. So if we're going to promote agricultural uses, this would be more consistent with the provincial policy statement than leaving it as is. Uh, so, and in my opinion, it is minor in nature. The MR zoning requires a minimum um, a lot of 1,800 and change uh, square meters. It is um, 33,000 uh, um, square meters. What we're dealing with here is 1,200 of those. So we're in nowhere impairing that lot. These are marginal lands that have never been used or utilized by the um, current existing uses on the Pepper property. Okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, does the committee have any questions for Maria? Okay. So, is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay, no. All right, so I just have one kind of question. Um, like, in terms of the boundary adjustment, it, I would be okay with it if you're actually correct in the fact that the fence line where it is shown is not changing and you're just adding. Um, it's not changing. So I am, um, I'm a member of the public. I couldn't unmute my mic that I would like to speak on this issue. Okay. Can I get your name, please? Uh, it's Joan Pringle and okay. um, my husband and I are the property owners. Um, and with regards to um, having a buffer zone, just so you know, the, one of the reasons that we wanted to obtain that this very small piece of property, because some years back, my concern was that they could extract right up to our property line. And when I talked to, I don't know which department I talked to at Norfolk County, they said yes, that... Um, extracting could go right up to our property line. Now, I don't know if you've walked around the premises, but all the topsoil has been taken away um, and used, sold. So all this is is a dust bowl and to refer to it as agriculture when it's just mulch and gravel and dirt, 
um, you can't grow anything on the land. Uh, the fence, um, as Maria has stated, we've had that fence um, up and that is the property. We're not trying to take property to the left of that fence in the photo. The property that we're trying to attain is to the right. So the, the photograph does not do um, justice to the property that we're trying to attain. Great. Does the committee have any questions for the property owner? Okay. Um, well, just back to my comments. If the fenced area is actually um, not changing, and that's the parcel that you're trying to acquire or do the boundary adjustment for, I actually could support that. Um, I'm not sure if the committee members have any other comments they want to make regarding this before we move to a decision. Yes, through the chair, I just I really want to clarify this. Um, so my understanding is right now the property line goes on the inside of the fence. Is that correct? Yes, that's my understanding. Is that correct, Maria? Yes. And I too. Okay, so the fence line is not moving. The property line will be where basically the fence line is. Is that correct? Yes, that's my understanding. That's correct. Hi, Madam Chair. Yep, Rudy. It's, it's Rudy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I concur with your comments. I think the request is reasonable and if the committee desires, I would put a forth a motion of approval. Okay, so you're making a motion for approval? Yes. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that? Lisa? Mm. Okay, all in favor of approval? Okay, that's the applications approved. Thank you. Okay, the next application is file number ANPL 2022152. Um, it's for a minor variance and it's for Wayne and Mandy Moini. And I'll ask staff to get that report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to reconstruct an existing single detached uh, dwelling requiring relief of 8.82% from the maximum permitted lot coverage of 15%. Uh, 3.98 meters from the minimum front yard setback of 6 meters to permit a decreased front yard setback of 2.02 .02 meters um, and 1.54 meters from the minimum interior side yard setback of 3 meters to permit an interior side yard setback of 1.46 meters. The subject lands are located uh, by the intersection of Reserve Street and Ordnance Avenue, uh, having approximately an area of 797 square meters. Um, they're occupied by, as mentioned, a single detached dwelling and boathouse. There's also an easement which runs parallel to Ordnance Avenue, uh, which intersects the rear portion of the subject lands to provide access for residents to their lots in Ordnance Avenue. They are designated resort residential within the Lakeshore Special Policy Area Secondary Plan, uh, zoned resort residential, and also within the Long Point Region Conservation Authority's regulatory boundaries. The LPRCA has provided a comment, uh, you know, confirming it meets the definition of a replacement with a minor addition. It's met required criteria for flood proofing. Um, you know, notes requirements for a septic system have been satisfied. Uh, they just made a note that on the application, the boathouse on site is labeled the bunkhouse. They just want to clarify that that wouldn't be supported. And we did a site visit and confirming that it's just a syntax error. The site, the space is not used for habitable purposes. It's just a boathouse. Um, we received seven uh, signed comments from neighboring lots, um, just confirming that they live on Ordnance Avenue and they support the application in front of the committee today. My report details, you know, some key concerns in the design guidelines um, regarding side yard setbacks, lot coverage, and minimum rear front and rear yard. Um, generally speaking, you know, just noting as per properties kind of continue to redevelop, 
and reduce front yard setbacks, the neighborhood character shifts away from what is traditionally characterized Turkey Point as a resort area with green space. Um, so staff just want to note for maybe future proposed reductions may not get support uh, given the outline concerns and degree of relief already requested. But with these considerations concerned, I believe it meets for test for minor variance and recommend for approval. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay. Yes, it's 105 ordinance that we're dealing with. Okay, yeah, recommended for approval. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, we have recommendation for approval. Alan moves that and a seconder, Adam. Okay, all in favor of approval. Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application is approved. The next application is file number ANPL2022153. The applicants Fred Ledwick, Rose Ledwick, and Kim Ledwick, and it's for 801 Norfolk Street South in Simcoe, and it's for a minor variance. And I'll ask staff to give that report. Awesome. So through the chair, we have received an application for a minor variance to construct a single detached dwelling and accessory dwelling unit in the agricultural zone requiring relief from the maximum usable floor area of the primary dwelling unit of 45% to permit the accessory residential unit to be a total of 65% of the primary dwelling unit dwelling unit for a total of 181 square meters where 125.5 square meters uh, would be permitted based on the drawings submitted. Um, so the subject lands uh, are designated agricultural in the official plan. They are zoned agricultural as well. Um, staff have reviewed the four tests of a minor variance. Um, we are confident that the size and scale of the proposed primary dwelling and accessory dwelling uh, meet the four tests uh, and we're recommending approval of the application. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Staff have any, or does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Okay, no questions. Is there any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application? Okay. We have a recommendation from staff for approval of this application. Can I have a committee member move that? I have Lisa. Can I have a seconder? Okay, I got Alan. And all in favor? And Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application is approved. Next application is file number BNPL 2022154. The applicants are Helen Abair. Joseph Abair and Grace Cabarega, and it's for 121 Norfolk County Road 19 West Norwich. And I'll ask staff to give that report. Uh, so thank you. So through the chair, an application has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of 50 meters, a width of 50, meter, 50 meters, and a depth of 48.81 meters, having an area of 2,444.5 square meters retaining a parcel having uh, approximately 39 or 40 hectares as a boundary adjustment. Uh, lands uh, are proposed to be added to a vacant parcel located immediately to the west for a final lot size of 5,413.5 um, square meters or approximately 1.3 acres. So the subject lands are um, designated um, agricultural by the official plan. They also are zoned agricultural by the, the zoning bylaw. Um, so as stated in the previous presentation, um, the official plan does permit and the PPS uh, provincial policy statement does permit um, boundary adjustments for legal or technical reasons. In this instance, um, there is a municipal drain and provincially significant wetland. Um, fortunately, you can't see it on the this mapping, but um, located to the north um, west of the property, there is a significant wetland and the entire vacant lot is located within the adjacent lands. So constructing on that lot, as indicated by the Long Point Region Conservation Authority, would be quite challenging. So in consultation with uh, Long Point Region Conservation Authority and the applicants, um, this is really hard for me to say, 
because you guys know me and boundary adjustments in the AAG area. <laughs> um, but in this case, there is truly a technical um, reason, um, given the location of the PSW and how um, in the conservation authorities assessment, um, shifting where the buildable area would be um, slightly to the east will actually improve the quality of the PSW. There would be less of an impact to the significant uh, wetland. Um, and it does allow the applicants to, to build the same size house that would have been permitted if they um, built on the, the current lot. So this is probably my limit for legal and technical reasons, but um, <laughs> as noted as noted in the report, um, Steph, Steph, you support this one, um, even though as you guys know how I feel about this. So, so there is a recommendation of approval on the table um, because I, I truly do believe in, in maintaining PSWs and the environmental so uh, yeah if you have any questions let me know thank you any questions for planning staff from the committee no i just have one i noticed the property uh, on the other side is ir but what, what's actually located there oh um that's a church okay thank you okay um any member of the public wishing to speak regarding this application no Okay, we have a recommendation from staff for approval. Can I have a committee member move that? Hey, okay, I got Adam and a seconder. Alan, all in favor of approval. And Rudy? Yes. Okay, that application is approved. Okay, and the next application is our last application, and it's File number BNPL 2022155. It's Brandy Creek Farms is the applicant. It's 481 Wyndham Road 19 La Salette, and it's for a surplus farm dwelling summers. And I'll ask staff to give that report. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of approximately 85 meters with the same depth of 71 meters and an area of um, about 1.4 acres and retain a parcel having an area of approximately 35 hectares or 87 acres as a severance of a dwelling made surplus through farm amalgamation. So these are located east of the intersection of Wyndham Road 9 and Brantford Road. Um, they are uh, designated and zoned agricultural. It is a unique lot in that the subject lands are occupied by um, two single detached dwellings. So the subject lands to be severed are occupied by one of those built in 1992 in a detached garage. And then the lands to be retained are um, have the second single detached dwelling, trailer, three barns, and two sheds. The applicant has indicated that the barns and the lands to be retained have no history of livestock. Um, there's also a small section of provincially significant wetland um, with some portions of significant woodlands through review of the proposed lot to be severed in addition to comments from the Forestry Operations Division and the LPRCA. Um, so you can your staff that there no constituted risk to the natural features or their ecological functions. Um, so some items to note, um, because the lot has two single attached dwellings, the standard rezoning to not permit new residential or sorry, new single detached dwellings on the retained lands um, won't be applied in this case. Um, on site visit, we noticed that the pathway for farm machinery would directly, you know, abut the proposed lot lines. Um, so essentially, we proposed, uh, or I proposed a condition which is in your package. Um, I had a discussion with the Ontario, sorry, the building department to kind of to understand if there was some wiggle room regarding the septic system and I believe there's only a three meter setback required so um, my proposed lot is kind of depicted roughly in my report it ends up being about an acre um, kind of gives some buffer for the machinery if there's a fence being built there just adds a little bit of a buffer um, and would hypothetically meet the zoning bylaw and the building code um, the zoning administrator noted in the application, the detached garage and lands to be severed. I uh, didn't note the size, so a condition has been added um, just to have them confirm that to make sure that it meets all zoning provisions. Um, so with that said, uh, I'm recommending approval concerning the policies of PPS and official plan. I do also have an alternative conditions list if my proposed condition on a block configuration isn't agreeable to the committee. 
Um, so it just has that piece for the zoning administrator just to ensure that there's no deficiencies created. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions for planning staff? Okay, no questions. Is there any member of the public wishing to speak? And I'll just remind you, Dave, to turn the mic on, please. One person at a time. Put a good system here. Um, Dave Rowe, I'm the uh, agent for for the applicant. Uh, the proposal does uh, uh, qualify for a surplus farm uh, dwelling severance. That's not the issue. Uh, the issue really is the lot configuration. Uh, when we developed the made the application to submit, uh, we made uh, a conscious effort to uh, uh, make sure that no active farmland was going to be removed from uh, from agriculture. We uh, uh, looked at the existing uh, landscaping, the trees, and uh, uh, made sure that those uh, trees uh, would be Mean with the residential lot. Uh, the drainage, uh, it's interesting, the, the drainage on the property when it, uh, the house was built uh, as part of the uh, uh, farm drainage, uh, they did a, a drainage plan for the house and the intention was to make sure that water from the fields, which is uh, basically uphill coming downhill, uh, would not uh, drain through to the house to the to the foundation and create water problems uh, for the house. So consequently, they planted a row of trees along the back. They uh, uh, developed a swale, draining swale that runs uh, east west. The idea, uh, because the lands of the north the farmland is higher, it would drain. But it, it, the water would then hit the, the uh, grassed area, then hit the swale, and then uh, go eastward, uh, eventually out to the, out to the farm. Um, on the uh, east side of the house, the existing uh, septic tile bed. And uh, from the house perspective, it looks level. But when you go and you look at it from the uh, east side looking west, what you notice is it's basically raised and there's a, a slope going down to the field, uh, to the edge of the field. And the, it's important that that, uh, that extra land uh, be uh, retained with the house because what it does is it ensures that the uh, slope from the septic tile bed uh, down, to the, down to the field uh, is maintained and not undermined. Uh, again, the, the trees at the rear, uh, which are quite mature, have uh, been there 25 plus years, um, do buffer the house from the from the farm activities uh, uh, to the north. Uh, uh, the owner, the purchaser of the uh, owner of the house, is the original owner of the farm, and they have a, uh, uh, a deal by which uh, the do farm owners uh, bring through, will convey to them the, the, the house. Uh, the, in, so they, in fact, have been living there since the house was built. Uh, what they're also intending to do uh, is put a shop at the back of the garage. Again, uh, there's not a huge dis distance be behind the garage to the uh, Carpet line as we had submitted. Now, um, planning staff in more recent months uh, have uh, reiterated the uh, zoning bylaw uh, minimum lot uh, area of uh, 2,000 square meters, which roughly half an acre. Um, and, but that's a minimum, not a maximum. And a little bit of history and, and planning staff. Uh, Presently, at the county, uh, weren't with the county prior to 
2014 when the comprehensive bylaw for Norfolk County was was uh, developed. Uh, the original bylaws, as some of you may, may require, uh, recall, uh, the minimum acreage in the agricultural zone was one acre. And uh, it wasn't a magic number. It, it was developed by myself and uh, Jim uh, McIntosh, former uh, manager of planning for Norfolk. And it was a nice figure, uh, easily remembered. And, uh, and uh, what it did is it provided it when we did surplus farm uh, of severances or when we did uh, one lot off the farm severances or retirement lots at the time, uh, it saved the, the county or the region at the time when the bylaws were done, the original bylaws, it, it saved us doing in one year, I think we approved six, 700 severances and then there were six or 700 rezonings that we as a region or local municipalities didn't have to do. So. That's kind of the background on it, and, and uh, uh, I know ideally we, we looked at roughly the one acre, but what you have to look at each site. And when you look at the site, does it in fact make sense? That's it, uh, because there's nothing magic about one acre or one and a half acres or whatever. It's what makes sense on the ground. And uh, zoning bylaws are not policy, they're a regulatory tool. Uh, and so in this particular case, when you look at it, you look at it as a whole, that is the original landscaped residential portion of that farm property uh, to uh, suggest that all oh, we should cut it back a little bit on the north and a little bit on the east so we get to this magic number of maybe one acre. Uh, on the ground, that really doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, uh, this committee has approved and, and, and actually did one for me back in December for, for George and uh, Willie Vermeersh, uh, just south of uh, uh, Tilsonburg, uh, where we took in the landscaping. We made sure there was no uh, uh, active farmland being removed, and it was approved at 1.78. Interestingly enough, that particular application was supported by staff. So what I'm asking is, is that uh, the committee approve the severance as submitted, uh, because in fact, it just makes sense on the ground. Thank you. Comment. Uh, so through the chair, I normally don't do this type of thing, but I just wanted to clarify a couple points that Mr. Rowe made. I, in fact, was working in the planning department in 2014 when the comprehensive zoning bylaw was made, and I did work with Mary Elder. I did put together <laughs> that bylaw with her, so I was here. I was around when we looked at the one acre <laughs> as a minimum, and Mr. Rowe does know that staff at the time did really push for the one acre, even though it wasn't anywhere written. So a one acre size was the magic number because Jim and I guess Dave had worked out that one acre. <laughs> so there were a number of surplus farm dwelling severances where we did push Mr. Rowe in particular to make those lot sizes smaller to be about an acre in size. If, is that fair? That's fair to say. And then I also want to say that the surplus farm dwelling severance that he just referenced for um, the Vermeersh's was not 1.7 acres in size, it was 1.3. And we did work with Mr. Rowe and the applicants to amend the size of that um, to take in the um, landscaping space and give them um, an accessory greenhouse. Um, but at the end of the day, the lot size was actually smaller than what was submitted originally. And to the points that Mr. Rowe made about this particular um, case, we did go to the site, we did walk it. There is landscaping, as you can see in the pictures, there are mature trees. I think the direction Hana is coming from is that we do have a new policy statement where we're supposed to be protecting agricultural land. It is clear in our official plan that that is the direction. This particular site has a, you can't see it unfortunately in the, um, the map that we have here, but it is, I believe, in the report. Um, if you look at the aerial photo, so around the, um, the proposed lot, there is a, like a farm entrance. So part of the rationale for asking for the lot to be a little bit smaller was to provide a bit of a buffer 
so that any farm equipment or whoever, um, like let's say this lot is sold in the future. I understand that the current occupant wants to live there, but let's say it's sold in 10 years or so. Someone comes in and puts in a fence. It will make it extremely difficult for, given where the trees are and things like that, for farm equipment to sort of make the turn while we were there. So we did think that if you move the property line in slightly, it does also provide an opportunity for any potential fence in the future, and it still allows the existing entrance and farm, you know, laneway that's there, you know, to be used for farm equipment. So some of the rationale for the reduction in the lot size is also to sort of help the farming operation that's in existence so that there aren't, um, again, this land use compatibility conflict. So we want the person who's living in the house to, you know, be happy and not impacted by the farm. And we also want the farm not to be impacted by the residents. So part of the rationale, I, I believe, and I, Connie can speak for herself, but um, when we were on site was that in fact, that point, because we were walking on the laneway and we were like, oh, this turn here is pretty tight. If that's exactly where the property lines would be. So thank you for indulging me. <laughs> thank you for your comments, Jennifer. Okay, so um, based on the report here, the request is about 1.4 acres in size. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, and um, the laneway, I'm assuming the laneway is to the right of what we're seeing on the, like the right property line. Sorry, through the chair, it's hard to see um, in this image because the red line kind of covers it. But if you look at um, page four of the report in figure two that um, Pana has provided, you can see um, you can see okay. sort of the outline yeah. of where the cultivated land is and sort of that edge is actually sort of a lane. Well, it appeared while we were there. Um, and I do believe when we were speaking with the occupant of the home, um, he confirmed that that was sort of a laneway for the farm as well and that farm equipment um, used that laneway so part of the rationale for asking for the lot lines to be moved in slightly was to sort of make this maneuvering around the property um, easier for farm equipment okay so my question then to dave is if we were to ask the applicant to reduce the like maybe not to the minimum requirements but to an acre in a in order to move the one lot line so that the um, entrance for the farm equipment yeah no, uh, actually most of the reduction in area uh, proposed by staff is to the rear of the garage uh, what we will uh, certainly agree to is on the eastern property line to move it slightly to the west to ensure that the existing entrance to the field is maintained. We would agree to that. Uh, I think the 1.4 is, is quite reasonable, uh, but we would be in agreement to moving it, uh, the easterly uh, lot line for the lot slightly to the east to ensure that the existing entrance uh, to the field is maintained. Okay. Does the committee have any other comments or discussion? Okay, so in terms of the conditions in the report, I'm just going to look to planning staff on how I can phrase that properly. So that it currently says that the lot configuration be amended so that the setbacks are no greater than the minimum requirements. And I'm going to amend that to... I, I would uh, amend it by taking that uh, uh, condition out and just say that the uh, application be further amended by uh, ensuring that the existing farm entrance on the east side of the lot uh, remains with the farm. Okay. Well, it is with the, it's remaining with the farm. The, no, Am I correct? For, it currently for, is remaining. From with what is shown, uh, on least on the air photo that I have, it looks like the 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 concern is that the farm entrance uh, is partly on the lot. Is is that the staff concern? Your mic. 
sorry for kind of jumping into Hong's um, application here, but I think um, the, the wording that Mr. Rowe has proposed doesn't necessarily get to the crux of like being clear that the property line needs to shift a bit. Like, I don't think based on what's been proposed, like there's any question that the property line doesn't show that the farm uh, laneway is with the farm. I think what we're asking for is just a little bit more of a buffer between the laneway and the residential property. So that property line at a minimum, um, I think the condition should be clear and that the property line still needs to shift to the west. Um, and if we want to give it a number or if we want to say like to the side, like we'd work it out, you know, with staff, but like there needs to be, I think, an appropriate buffer along those property lines next to that laneway. I Okay, I'm going to tell you what I've written down and then we'll see if it's agreeable. Okay. <laughs> um, so the east lot, okay, so it's going to say that the lot configuration be amended so that the east lot line be reduced further to the west to be worked out with staff. My biggest concern is where the septic tile bed is and the steepness on that slope. I don't want to see any of that slope go with the farm. Thanks. Um, through the chair, I maybe keeping the phrasing regarding like satisfaction to the building code and community development, you can make sure that that septic piece. Carly Woodhead is now exiting. So we don't really want to reduce it to three meters from the septic, but we want to reduce it somewhere in the middle. So you, you'll move that east east property line three meters in. But does three meters not cut into that slope you're talking about? How can we? So I, I'm wondering if we can add the qualifier that because there's the as long as there's not like an impact to the septic system and there's no impact to the drainage, like the lot line needs to move in. So then we will like we'll kind of come to a point okay. so the drainage and the septic system are not impacted. Is that does, can we add that to the condition? Yeah, fair. Okay. Okay, great system. The 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 uh, rear lot line be as proposed uh, in the application. Okay, I'll add that. Okay, <laughs> I'll finish writing and then I'll read it back. Um, through the chair, just to to clarify. You know, the concerns of buffering apply for from a planning perspective would apply to the rear and the lot line as the machinery goes around the lot. So just to clarify, but I leave it to committee on the condition. Well, it's more the entrance that we're. It does go around the rear lot line there. That's in the. see that now okay well we're only asking for the <laughs> to simplify things the lot configuration be amended so that the east lot line be reduced further to the west to be worked out with staff drainage and septic system should not be impacted and the rear lot line will remain the same that would be perfect thank you well I think I just heard that I, I see now that the uh, the entrance does go around the back, but we're. Um, that's, that's OK, there's trees there and if they can get around those trees, they can. Things will be fine. <laughs> OK, so we have a mover of approval with that condition added and that's Alan, a seconder. Lisa, all in favor. 
and Rudy. Yes. Okay. The application is approved as amended. Thank you very much. Thank you, staff. Thanks, Dave. And I can keep everybody happy. <laughs> okay. And now that is the uh, end of our applications. Are there any other business by the committee? And no other business. Then I have a recommendation that the commit that we adjourn to meet again at the next regular session to be held at August seventeenth on Wednesday, August seventeenth, twenty twenty two. Mover. Okay. Sorry, Alan. Seconder, Lisa. All in favor? Rudy? Yes. Okay. We're adjourned at 6.15 p.m. Thank you. So, sorry, I know we just adjourned, but I, I would like to make a clarification. <laughs> Mr. Rowe was right about the size of that lot. <laughs> <laughs>